We'll sing the first and second verse of 178. begin with the word of prayer. Good to have everyone here this uh, evening. And those folks still coming in, good uh, attendance tonight. And that's a blessing. And those that are at home watching, we welcome you also to our service. Dear Heavenly Father, it is a uh, Lord, a joy to be in your house as it always is. And, and Father, we come before your presence tonight asking for your blessing, your hand upon everything that is said and done tonight. Uh, Lord, we think about the different uh, departments going on uh, in this next hour. We pray for the Kids for Christ and the teen class. The adult Bible study, be with those on their way. May you keep them safe. We pray for those watching uh, on live stream as well. And Lord, we just once again ask you would be glorified in all that we do this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And if you could look up this way and give your undivided attention, and Brother Larry is going to give us a couple of announcements. All right, here are your midweek announcements. Quarterly members meeting. Sunday night will be our quarterly members meeting. All members are encouraged to attend. Adult Valentine's activity. All adults are invited to the Valentine's activity on Saturday, February 13th at 6 p.m. And we will have a fun night of games and fellowship and we'll be playing a murder mystery game. Yes, and the cost is free since there will be no food. College concert, the, Fa the Fairhaven Baptist College Inst Instrumental uh, Ensemble uh, will be with us on Sunday, February 14th. Don't miss this up uplifting music. And due to the extreme cold that is coming in this weekend, there will be no organized soul winning here Saturday. All right, obviously this year, uh, just a quick word about the Valentine's Bank. We are not going to have our normal production that we do where we sort of center everything around the meal that we have, which is typically phenomenal and delicious. And unfortunately, that's uh, uh, just not advised at this point. I'm sure there's a time where we will have our Valentine's Banquet again. But for this year, we are just going to have uh, some other types of fun and uh, has anyone ever participated in a murder mystery game before? You ever done that? Okay, a couple of you. All right. So uh, this is going to be the first time for us where we, uh, where we try this out. Uh, but uh, we're going to have uh, that game organized uh, where we're sort of uh, playing different roles in this game. And we have to try to figure out who perpetrated the crime. So that, that'll be fun to play. Uh, in addition, we will have a devotion, obviously, related to uh, the Valentine's uh, holiday. And then uh, we will also have some other games sprinkled in here and there. We expect for the night to last about an hour and a half, roughly. Uh, but looking forward to it. So please don't skip it, folks. We want to try to get back into the swing of things. And while it won't be uh, completely as we typically do, I promise you we will have a good time for those that are there. So don't miss it. You're planning on, on being there. Uh, Brother Abe is basically in charge of it this year, doing basically everything. And uh, he, so he's working hard at it. And uh, he'll, I'm sure it'll be a, a fun night. So instead of a Valentine banquet, we're going to call it a Valentine activity. So I'm looking forward to that. So keep that in mind. Now, as uh, Brother Larry mentioned in his announcements, we are supposed to get severe cold this weekend. I mean, it is sub-zero temperatures. 
I think they're talking negative 11, either Saturday or into Sunday morning. So very, very cold. We've already mentioned no organized soul winning. We also will not be running the bus routes this Sunday morning uh, because that is just too severe of cold for us to uh, get the buses out there. You can imagine if one were to break down in this severe cold. Uh, in fact, just getting them started may be a, would be a, a, a feat uh, for this coming Sunday morning. But services will not be canceled. Now, as far as I know, the roads will be clear. It'll be very, very cold, but uh, we are still planning on the, the regular services, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and, of course, uh, the, the buildings will be warm, okay? So trust us on that. Now, if something were to malfunction, we would uh, get the word out and let everyone know and we couldn't have service. But as far as we know, the heat's going to work fine, and so we will not be canceling the services but just the bus routes and the, the organized soul winning because of the severe sub-zero temperatures. And it's supposed to be like this a couple weeks, too. So let's just get through this. And we had a good winter up until, you know, a couple weeks ago. And so we can't complain too much, but we'll just get, get through this. And uh, I was hoping Bob Meyer would bring a little Tennessee weather up with him. But uh, what was the temp when you left there, Bob? In the 40s, okay. Okay, 48.50. All right, that's all right. Quit rubbing it in. You have to, and then to really rub it in, you want to really rub it in. Tony Lauletta is going to Florida for a week or so. Uh, where are you leaving tomorrow? Friday. So, talk about timing. Oh, you're gonna be back Monday, but you're missing the the frigid weekend anyway. So, all right. Oh. Yeah, you might want to. All right, so good to have everyone here tonight. Is there a first-time visitor? If you brought one, raise your hand, introduce your guest. If not, we're looking around off the bus route. Don't believe we have a first-timer. Okay, everyone is home, folk. Let's go ahead and stand. We'll sing our last song, and then the Kids for Christ will go next door right here. And uh, Brother Phil Grossi speaking to them tonight. And then we'll have our teen class as well dismissed. Hymn number 39, Take My Life and Let It Be. We'll sing the first and second verse of 3-9. For Christ and teen class dismissed please have a great time and adults may be seated and we're going to get right into our prayer time if you did not receive a prayer bulletin raise your hand we'll get you one anyone not receive one okay good all right so have your blue sheet your prayer bulletin ready we're going to go through that quickly Go through that quickly, and then we will uh, add some to this list. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Okay. And uh, we've got baby Soren, Rose Borgers, and uh, how's she doing? Any change at all? Just Okay. But how's she doing? Okay. All right, Sandy Brow, Rick Castile, continue praying for him. Austin's dad, Jeremy Cox, and um, Lindy Yates, continue to pray for her. How, uh, am I on? Okay, can you hear me in the back? Good. Okay, so continue praying for Linda. She fell last week and hurt her side and feet, so pray for her for better health and strength. 
Pray for Alan Johnson. Now, he's down in Florida. He he's text, texts me every once in a while and rubs it in. He's probably watching tonight. and He's been watching all the services, even though he's attending a, a good Baptist church down there in Florida. But he doesn't miss our, our services. And uh, so uh, pray for him. He's, he's wanting us to pray for a, um, a new uh, pers- a person that he's been witnessing to. Praying for the salvation of George Jacob. And then um, Marilyn Barb Snyder continues with the arthritis pain. Uh, Chiara, uh, Sharon Clark Rushing, uh, and Tony Lulo. Tony's actually a little bit better. I talked to Linda this uh, afternoon, and uh, they've been giving him steroids for this uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and it has been helping. Uh, ease, is, ease some of the pain, but that's not the long-term solution. So uh, uh, he's going to see another doctor soon, and they do have a treatment they're going to try for him. So pray about that, but uh, Tony is a little bit better, and he is planning on coming Sunday, according to Linda. So continue praying for Tony. And then Cheryl O'Lear's parents, pray for them, better health. Bill Cartwright. Uh, unspoken for a friend, and also he texted me and has a praise. Uh, His stress test came back good, so he's glad about that. Pray for Marcia, Dominic, uh, his uh, uh, therapy for his feet, Doan Hornsby, Michael Reed, Shalene, Gorlinda Tam, and Jessica Dabrowski, who uh, uh, traveled to Ohio. I'm assuming she got there safe. And then uh, Miriam for nephew Jacob and a spiritual need that he has. Uh, Will Gennard, spiritual prayer for T- Tyler. Dave Nolnack, good results from Heart Monitor. Uh, Karen, uh, Catherine, Catherine Grossi needs a job, so pray for her. Right now she's on work scholarship at Providence Baptist College. That's just barely enough to survive uh, you know, it really doesn't take care of everything, uh, but uh, she really needs a job. She's put some applications in, and I think one of the, th- the difficult, uh, one of the things that, that's difficult for her is she doesn't have a car. Uh, so, but pray for her that she could get a job uh, where some of the other students work. That way she could uh, ride with them to work. And then, uh, let me see, we have... Uh, Zach Segretti, new employment opportunity. Is that still as is? Yes. Okay. okay, let us know when we, you got some news, and yes. we'll, uh, we'll adjust here. Okay, so praying for that. And then um, uh, Mary Rushing is going to have hip surgery soon. Amy Kono, still waiting for referral to see a surgeon. She has that hernia and uh, in pain. And then uh, Kenny Barron, Unspoken, Michelle Hawkins, Donna Parker. She has a, a CAT scan coming up. And Bill Niehaus, pray for Bill, but also pray for Bonnie. Now, she's a little bit down further. We'll get to her in a minute. Jeff Milkey, a scarring on lungs from COVID. David Leonchik uh, in the hospital with COVID. What's that? Oh, good. So we can take him off. So please make a note of that so we can give to Mandy and make sure that uh, we get him off there. Well, that's good news. That's a praise. Linda Dennis has an unspoken. Amon, Amon, Amon. Take him off too. All right, good. All right, okay. We'll leave the kidney part on there then. All right. And then uh, Aaron uh, Andreas says been uh, having a kidney stone infection, and Bonnie Niehaus, Bonnie fell in the shower a couple days ago and broke her hand. So pray for Bonnie, and I think tomorrow she's going to see a doctor, and so pray for her. Cheryl Canelli, pray for her. She's been uh, fighting vertigo, and um, so pray for her. And then one of our missionaries, T.J. Kimmel, uh, with core missions, is in the hospital having difficulty breathing. There's an update on him? Okay, we'll read it. Okay, we'll start with Jane. 
Jane Prodell, this is a new one. Jeff's stepsister and, and, uh, and uh, the stepsister's son. Uh, Becca and Griffin. Uh, uh, we're praying for them. Oh, okay, they're... Okay, so her husband and his dad passed away. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. And, um, and then um, Dave Burlingham? That was the, the man that passed. Okay. So pray for comfort for the family in the passing of Dave Burlingham. And uh, how did Jeff's uh, first day on the job go? Okay, but he started on Tuesday. Good. Okay, it's from Elaine. And this update on T.J. Kimmel, one of our missionaries. Blood clots in every lobe of his lungs. Oh, my. And some are pressing on his heart and killing cells. Uh, he's on strong blood thinners and possibly will need surgery. So pray for this, uh, one of our missionaries. Young man, too. Young, and uh, his name, well, he goes by TJ, TJ, kind of like our TJ, TJ, TJ Kimmel, okay, pray for him, and then pray for Emma, Emma Brisbane, grandma has COVID, uh, grandpa has pneumonia and COVID, so her grandparents both with COVID, and in the hospital, both of them, so prayers for their recovery, I know that's got to be a, a burden on your heart, Emma. And then uh, from Bert and Miriam, uh, praise, we closed on the purchase of our building on Friday. Amen. So that's from them, and thanks for praying, everybody. They put, so praise the Lord, that closed. What a blessing. All right, this time we'll take a couple minutes to pray, and um, I, I'm, I'm going to ask that you'll... Uh, you know, family stay together, but uh, if you're close to someone, go ahead and pray with them. Yes. Okay, quickly. Who? Uh, Timmy. Would you pray for his salvation, or what do you want to? He what would you like to pray? For? Okay, so pray for Tim, Timmy. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, let's pray. Take a couple minutes, and uh, then we'll get right into the lesson tonight. Heavenly Father, we do come to you tonight, this evening, asking for your blessings upon these requests. And Father, we thank you for, um, Lord, your Son, Jesus, and for all that he's done for us, and for dying on the cross, for resurrecting. It is he that gives us the power and we know that He is the source of healing, He's the source of salvation, the source of, of help of any kind. And, and Father, we pray for these. Uh, Lord, we did our best to name all of these, and uh, we will pray for these uh, uh, continually. But Lord, we think of these new ones especially. And uh, I pray for Bonnie as uh, she fell and broke her hand, give her healing. 
and for Lindy Yates, for Tony Lulo, be with those that will be traveling. Uh, Lord, we pray for our brother T.J. Kimmel uh, as he is um, in that hospital and with these blood clots and very serious condition for a young man. And I just pray, Father, you put your healing, miraculous hand upon him. Pray for Emma's grandparents, Lord. Pray for um, this uh, uh, mother and son that, that lost husband and father. We pray for um, Aunt Jamie, who I didn't mention, but from Gerlinda that uh, has a migraine. Uh, migraines, pray that she feels better soon. And, and Gerlinda Tam with the back pain. And Father, we thank you for the praises that we heard. Thank you for the Bolton's building being closed and that uh, uh, Lord being signed and delivered and we're thankful for that and, and uh, Lord we do praise you for the different uh, praises and Jeff Prodell beginning a new job and, and uh, others with uh, different blessings. Some that are facing um, some... Um, uh, tests and uh, different scans coming up and I think of Donna Parker I think of uh, Amy Kono that needs a referral quickly and uh, Lord others that just need to see their doctor uh, Lord give uh, help to them and open doors for them and Lord we just give you all the praise and the glory pray that you'll bless this uh, this study and uh, is exciting as we go through the book of Revelation, Father, we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I, it's good to see Bob Meyer tonight. God bless you, Bob. Of course, we miss the Meyers and the Harveys. It's a dear folks to our heart. And uh, we know they're doing well down there. And uh, always enjoy when Bob pops in. And he just can't resist being around the Chicago weather this time of year. And, uh, but... Uh, also, I appreciate the Wolaskis, and both of them are here tonight, and, and uh, Art and Kitty, they spent quite a bit of the day, well, last couple days, including preparing, but uh, Kitty opened up her kitchen and made a bunch of meals for our shut-ins, and I appreciate that, and went to several of the shut-ins, and so that's a blessing, and um, so uh, I called it, uh, I called it, what I call it, uh, Kitty's Mobile Kitchen. Because it got out there on wheels, right? Got in, in the car. I'll tell you what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that this below zero, sub-zero temperatures is going to kill all the COVID. Amen? I mean, at least in the Chicago area, I don't know, or the Midwest. I'm sure it's going to be cold in a lot of places, not just here. But uh, maybe it'll do something to it. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 14. By the way, thank you for praying for my gout problem. It is much, much better, and I appreciate that. Thank you for praying. I, I do want you to pray for me. I'm going to be preaching a lot the next couple weeks um, between Grace Baptist Church and uh, uh, also up at the college. And the reason is it's the time of year... Uh, the college has their uh, annual college missions conference. And uh, they always want me to uh, teach a little extra. I usually open up the first chapel every year uh, and kind of kick it off. And so, counting tonight, I'm preaching tonight. Then I'll teach tomorrow morning for three hours. I preach in chapel tomorrow. Then I'll preach here at Grace Baptist, uh, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And then I'll preach Monday morning at the college missions conference. Uh, and then uh, here again next Wednesday. So that's several times in the next, uh, uh, what, uh, six days, seven days. And uh, now you say, well, uh, what about Brother Abe? Well, Brother Abe, that, I gave him the, the, the activity. I said, Brother Abe, I want you to do the, the Valentine activity. So that's going to be what he's concentrating on. Uh, this uh, this week, this coming week or two, and so uh, that's all. That's his baby. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything with that. I'm just gonna be here for that. 
And, uh, and uh, well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Caitlin. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 14. And um, here's what we're going to do tonight. We are going to really scoot tonight. We're going to move along quickly because I'm, I am, I'm ready to get to the, to, the, to the good part. I mean, it's all good, but I am ready to get to chapter 19. And so tonight we are going to end the Great Tribulation. We're going to close it out tonight. We're not going to go in detail with a lot of it. We've already talked about the, six seal, the seven seals. We went over the seven trumpets. We talked about the two witnesses. We talked about the mark of the beast. We talked about the two beasts. We went over Revelation 12 quite a bit and the symbolism there and the war in heaven. And so tonight I want to get through um, uh, the great tribulation. So look, look at Revelation chapter 14, if you will. And um, we're going to take a look at this. So the first thing we see is the lamb. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 through 5, we see Christ. It's a picture of the Lord Jesus. He is the Lamb of God. And the Lamb of God in this, these passages are, is standing on Mount Zion. And with Him, we see the 144,000 witnesses. And there is a voice from heaven and a song that is sung. Also, a description of the 144,000 Jewish witnesses that will be spreading the gospel on earth during the tribulation period. And uh, they are also martyred during the tribulation period. So that's chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Also in chapter 14, we see the message of the angels concerning future judgment. Actually, we see one angel in particular, but the message of the angel concerning future judgment, and that is Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 13. Now, as far as we know, folks, uh, and, and as we read in the Bible, and I've read the Bible many, many times over, God has never called angels to preach the gospel to man. Now, angels have been called upon to deliver certain messages from God. He, uh, angels all, all throughout the Old Testament would give messages to, uh, to certain uh, uh, people in, in the Bible. Uh, in the New Testament, we see angels appearing and giving messages, like Gabriel giving the message to Mary and, and to Joseph and, and to Zacharias, and, and then a, an angel giving a message to, uh, to Cornelius. In, uh, in Acts chapter 10, to go find Peter, and so the gospel would be preached to him. But we do not see in the Bible angels actually going out into the population and witnessing or winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you follow me? All right? But here in this passage, everything okay? Okay. Uh, here in this particular passage, uh, we see an angel uh, that is actually preaching the gospel. Uh, we see that uh, an angel during the tribulation, during this particular time, in this chapter, is sent to preach the gospel to mankind. And so I want you to look at, uh, look at uh, chapter 14, and I want you to look at... Uh, uh, let's go to, um, let me see, verse number 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting what to preach? Talk to me now. Gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So here we see an angel actually uh, preaching the gospel to, uh, to men, to, to people on earth during the tribulation period. Uh, this is unusual. This has not been done before. But it will be done during the tribulation period. Now, uh, let me say this, folks. But right now, and we are in the age of grace, 
We are in what is called the church age, before the rapture. It is our time now. God is not going to send angels now. God is not going to send angels during the age of grace and the church age. That's not His plan. He sends us. He sends you and I to the lost. We are the guardians of the gospel, so to speak. We are the stewards and the ambassadors for Christ. It is up to us to get the gospel around the world and fulfill the Great Commission. But here in this particular moment, in this time, uh, sometime in the middle of the tribulation, you see an angel preaching the good news of the gospel. And then we go to uh, chapter 14, verses uh, 14 through 20, and we see a glimpse of the Lord's coming and also the battle of Armageddon. What you see in chapter 14 is simply a preview. It's a glimpse of, uh, of what's going to happen later on when the Lord Jesus actually comes back and, of course, uh, the battle of Armageddon. And look at that verse 14. Uh, everyone look in their Bibles, verse 14, verse 14 of chapter 14. This is a glimpse of the Lord's coming and the battle of Armageddon. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Now this is, uh, without a doubt, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, that's Jesus, and the earth was reaped. That means when Jesus comes back, the second time, literally, he is going to thrust in the sickle. That means he is going to destroy the armies of the Antichrist when he comes back in the clouds, with us, by the way, with his uh, heavenly army and the angels. Uh, verse 18, another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress, wine look at this now, was trodden without the city. We're talking about the city of Jerusalem. We're talking about the valley outside of Jerusalem, which is called the Valley of Jezreel. It says, The blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So the battle is going to be so bloody. And the blood is going to come from the Lord's enemies. <laughs> Obviously not from Him and not from His army. But all of those, all the armies, all the, the, the millions that will gather in that great valley to, to try to actually fight against the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, Jesus is going to put in His sickle and the wrath of God is going to fall down and, uh, and, and all of those armies will be destroyed. The Bible says the blood will be as high as the horse's bridle. If you know anything about horses, that's high. Uh, you know, most horses are pretty, pretty tall, pretty high. And uh, all the way to the bridle. And uh, uh, filling that valley with blood. And that's how, that, so this is a glimpse of the coming of Christ and of the battle of Armageddon. Now we're going to get to that. We're not going to skip that. But that doesn't come till Revelation 19 and next week. Okay? Let's go to uh, uh, chapter 15. In chapter 15 of Revelation, we see preparation in heaven just before the seven vials or bowl judgments are unleashed. We have one more set of judgments that have to be released. We're going to go over that in the next few minutes. So that's Revelation chapter 15. That simply is a uh, preparation for this. In chapter 15, it's, it takes place in heaven. There's two songs that are sung 
in preparation for the final series of judgments. The Song of Moses, which represents the Old Testament, and the Song of the Lamb, which represents the New Testament. Look in chapter 15, verse 3. Look at verse 3. It says, And they sing the Song of Moses, the servant of God, and the Song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Then the seven angels are given the last seven judgments to be unleashed upon the earth. They are called vile judgments or bowls. Okay? And, um, and so we're going to take a look at those. So now we go to chapter 16. Are you with me? So the seven vials or bowl judgments, and they are found in Revelation 16. So have your Bibles open to Revelation 16, and we're going to look at these different judgments. Now, the first set of judgments, the first set were seven what? No, not trumpets. What were the first set? Seals. Remember we had the four horsemen, which were part of those seven seals. You had the seven seals. Then the second set of judgments were the seven trumpets. And now we, we see the third set of judgments. And that these are the vials or bowel judgments. All right. Let's look at the first vial. And we're going to go to our graph for this. Okay. I hope you can see this. But uh, this right here is a graph of all seven bowls or vials. And it gives an explanation of each one of the judgments and also the passages that represent these judgments. So let's look at the first one. Uh, the first vile or bowl judgment are sores that uh, afflict those who accepted the mark of the beast. So all the unsaved of the world are going to receive these horrible sores all over their bodies. Let's look at... Uh, 16 verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Remember we already learned in in chapter uh, 13, that every, every single person in the world uh, that, that, uh, that accepts the Antichrist will also receive the mark of the beast. And uh, in order to buy or to sell or to negotiate, to do anything, they're going to have to take that mark. And all those that have the mark will have this plague come upon them. It's going to be some kind of horrible sore that, uh, that will afflict them. So that is vial number one. Then the second vial. The second vial is uh, that the sea will turn into blood. And not just a third of it, but all of the sea uh, will turn into blood. So all sea creatures will die. So if all the oceans and the seas turn into blood, that means Every sea creature is going to die. So much for saving Willie. But uh, anyway, that's what's going to happen. And uh, some of you are looking at me like it's my fault. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I really, I, teach, I get some really bad looks when I talk about these judgments. Listen, folks, I'm not sending these judgments. And, uh, and at the end of this lesson, we're going to tell you why God must judge, Okay. And we'll give you some scripture on that. Okay, so second vial, sea turns to blood. Let's look at verse 3. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Okay, so that's the second one. Now the third vial. The third vial is, uh, third judgment, is rivers now turn to blood. So you go from, watch me, you go from salt water being turned into blood to fresh water. And uh, let's uh, look at verse number, uh, verses 4 through 7. It says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. 
And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, must, and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Okay? The fourth vial is found in verse number 8. It says, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So the fourth judgment is mankind is scorched by the sun. So, so the rays of the sun, somehow or another, the sun will scorch people that are out in it. And, uh, and of course, what's the result of that? Well, people are going to blaspheme God even more. Hey, they're going to shake their fist at, at God even more. Look at, uh, at verses 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. Power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. All right, so that's the first four. The fifth judgment or the fifth bile or bowl is that the beast, the beast is the Antichrist. So the Antichrist's seat of government is afflicted. So his headquarters will be uh, somehow judged and afflicted. Let's take a look at that. That's found in verses 10 and 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. So his headquarters, his, his reign, his area will be, will be full of darkness. And it says, they gnawed their tongues for pain. Verse 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. So instead of repenting, instead of crying out to God for mercy, what are they going to do? They're going to blaspheme even more. They're going to shake their fist even more at God. So those are the first uh, five vials or bowls. The sixth vial is found in verses 12 through 16. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Who's the dragon, folks? He's the devil. Here you see the unholy trinity right here. Look at this. Look at verse 13. The unholy trinity... The dragon is Satan. Then it says, out of the mouth of the beast, that's the Antichrist. And out of the mouth of the who? False prophet. Remember we learned about the two beasts? And the first beast is Antichrist. He's the ruler of the one world government, the political system. The second beast is the false prophet. He's the ruler of the religious, the one world religion that is going to be formed uh, during the tribulation. So uh, here we see that the river Euphrates dries up. So that's what we see here in number 6. Euphrates is dried up. What does that do? It allows the world's armies to gather together. Where? In Israel. Armageddon. That valley I was talking to you about, the Valley of Jezreel. I'm going to show you a picture of that valley when we get to chapter 19 and we get to the Battle of Armageddon. But let me show you the Euphrates right here. And uh, right here, this is the Euphrates, right? This river. Look how long this river is. Now you can imagine if this river is dried up, it would give armies of the east and the north uh, uh, just an easy path into Israel. For example, from the north, from Russia and, uh, and uh, Turkey and places like that, they could come down here easily and cross over into uh, Israel. And then you've got uh, Iran and Iraq could easily come across the Euphrates together, together in that, la in that great battle. Uh, the, the armies of China, they say that China has a, has a, a billion... Uh, soldier, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a million, at least, uh, I think it's 200 million, something like that. Uh, they've got like 200 million uh, soldiers and so forth. So 
uh, you can see how the, if the Euphrates is dried up, it would give access, easy access to come across dry, dry ground all the way where? Into Israel, uh, where uh, the battle of Armageddon will be fought. That's, the, that's where Jesus is coming back, by the way. He's going to put his foot, his foot actually steps on the Mount of Olives. He's going to bust through the eastern, uh, eastern gate of Jerusalem. His foot's going to touch the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is going to split in two. And then after that, he goes after the armies of the Antichrist, which are all going to be gathered there thinking that they actually got a chance <laughs> to defeat the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And they're going to try it. They're going to attempt it. So that's the battle of Armageddon. So that's, that's this judgment. It's the drying up of the Euphrates. And let's go back to our graph. And then we got number seven, seventh file or cup, is the earth is utterly shaken. There's going to be an earthquake like the world has never seen. We go to uh, uh, verse 17. Look at 16, 17. It says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial, um, into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided, that's Jerusalem, into three parts, divided into three. The cities of the nations fell, not just Jerusalem, but other cities as well. I mean, New York will, will crumble. What's left of Chicago will crumble. What's left of Los Angeles will crumble into dust. What's left of Paris, London, Shanghai, Tokyo, Buenos Aires, Sao Paulo, Mexico City. Does it not say the cities right there? It says, the cities of the nations fell. That's going to be some kind of shaken, you know. And uh, just like Elvis sang, a whole lot of shaking going on, amen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, um, that's got to be the first time I've ever quoted Elvis from the pulpit. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, art like that one, right? And, uh, but uh, that is going to be some kind of earthquake, isn't it? And uh, look at verse 19, and the great city was divided into three parts. Okay, we read that. I don't want to repeat here. And um, so, verse 20, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Every island will be put underwater. Every mountain goes down. Verse 21, there fell upon men a great hail. So and it's not over. And, and to top it off, to top it off, here comes hail. Okay. This, this, this hail comes down. And um, it is, um, comes out of heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blaspheme God. Because, I think that's around 60 pounds. I think according to uh, biblical measurements of talents. Can you imagine 60-pound hailstones? Okay. I'm, I think I'm right on that 60 pounds. I'll, I'll look at it again, uh, but believe me, it's a lot. And uh, so these hailstones come down. And what, ha what, is, what do people do? And men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. So there is your last set of judgments. The seven vials or cups that are that are unleashed upon the world, the last set of judgments. And this all happens before the two systems collapse and then the coming of the Lord. But that brings us now to the fall of Babylon. Actually, it is the fall of two Babylons. We've got the fall of Babylon, one world religious system, that's found in Revelation 17. We're not going to read this chapter. I told you I wanted to, to get quickly through the tribulation tonight and get to, uh, to, to the coming of the Lord and the battle of Armageddon. But you read chapter 17 of Revelation. 
the chapter talks about the one world religion, this religious system, by the way, which is called the mother of harlots. The mother of harlots is the name that God gives to, to this religious system that will be a one world religion. And this religious system is going to collapse. There will be no more religion. The Antichrist, listen, the Antichrist, the first beast, he's going to use the second beast as long as he can for his own good. Then he's going to turn on the second beast and that religious system that he's only using for his own convenience. So the first thing that falls and collapses is Babylon, the religious system. Religious Babylon. You read that in Revelation 17. Then in Revelation chapter um, 18, you see the fall of the one world political and economic system. Revelation 18 talks about the collapse of the world's political system and the economy. It all totally collapses. You read Revelation chapter 18, it, it is unbelievable. I mean, the merchants and the businessmen in the world will weep. They will cry out because everything is gone. Everything, they, all the investors, and you know, we've heard a lot about Wall Street in the last few days, you know, the, the GameStop thing and, you know, all the investing and all this going on. Listen, um, and, and how, how the, you know, the elite is protecting, you know, theirs. They, they, don't, want, they don't want anybody cracking into their, into their elitist uh, uh, Wall Street. And uh, they, they, listen, uh, the rich get richer. The rich are going to get richer for a long time. And um, uh, someone asked a rich man one time, uh, you know, how much, more, uh, how much more money do you need? And he said, uh, not enough. <laughs> he said, there's not enough. There's never enough. And that's the, but, but when Revelation chapter 18, when, when, you, when we get to the end of the tribulation, there will be a total collapse of the world's economic system and political system, by the way, and it all collapses. So th that, that, that's the fall of Babylon, religious Babylon, and political and economic Babylon. All right? Now, um, I want to consider these things, and we'll finish up. Next Wednesday, we are going to go to chapter 19. Chapter 19 is the, the second coming, the literal coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First, we'll talk a little bit about the marriage supper of the Lamb, which, by the way, if you're saved you're going to be a part of that marriage supper. That's going to happen in heaven. So we're going to enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then back down on earth, we go. <laughs> okay, we go from the marriage supper to going back down to earth with Jesus on white horses, and that is the second coming, the battle of Armageddon. But I want to talk about, just quickly here, uh, some things to consider when you look at these judgments and you look at all these terrible things that are going to happen and that are unleashed upon the face of the earth and, and all these horrible things that people are going to go through uh, during the tribulation, these are things to consider. First of all, judgment against sin and wickedness is necessary because God is a holy God. Amen? Let me repeat that. Judgment against sin and wickedness is necessary because God is a holy God. Now, He's a loving God. Aren't you glad He's a loving God? He's a merciful God. He's a patient God. But His patience is going to run out. He has been merciful for thousands of years, has He not? Patient for thousands of years. And He still is today. But that patience is going to run out. He's a loving God. He sent His only begotten Son to die for mankind and to give mankind eternal life and escape from wrath. 
But man rejects that love. Man rejects uh, the, the Son of God and, and uh, what He did on the cross. But God not only is a loving God, He is a holy God. And he would, if He did not punish sin, He would not be holy. The Bible tells us, I want you to look in, in chapter 16 again and verse number 7. Look at Revelation 16 verse 7. It says, uh, And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy what? Judgments. Look at uh, Romans 1.32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. In Romans 2, verses 2 and 3, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Uh, in Romans 2, 5 and 6, But after thy hardness and, 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 and impotent heart uh, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. So God's judgment is righteous, folks. Listen, God's judgment is true. God has to judge sin and unrighteousness because he is a holy God. Do we understand that? He would not be holy if he, if he, if he did not judge sin. All right? Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention. The second is this. Judgment upon those who persecute and kill God's people is necessary. Judgment upon those who persecute and martyr God's people is necessary. Look what it says in Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Listen, thousands and thousands of people are going to be martyred during the tribulation. Their heads are going to be cut off. They're going to be hanged. They're going to be, they're going to be killed by Antichrist and, and this, uh, this one world system. Thousands and millions have already been martyred through the centuries. All through the, the centuries, all through uh, Christianity, people have been martyred. God's people have been persecuted and martyred. And now they cry out, How long, O Lord, holy and true, Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? And God will revenge the blood of his saints. And that's part of the reason why the judgments are going to fall upon man during the tribulation. Because it's a judgment for what has happened to his people. Alright? And then thirdly and lastly, judgment precedes victory. In other words, after judgment, is blessing. I told you at the beginning of the lesson tonight how quickly I want to get to chapter 19 <laughs> because I want to get to the good part. I want to get to the part where Jesus comes back and he's victorious. I want to get to the part where he reigns for a thousand years and we reign with him. I want to get to the part uh, of, uh, where it talks about the new Jerusalem and the new heaven and the new earth. But before we could get to that part we had to talk about the tribulation period and the judgments of God that, that falls upon mankind especially those uh, who reject God and embrace the Antichrist but judgment precedes victory after judgment is blessing joy comes after mourning relief comes after pain comfort comes after tears victory comes after defeat blessings come after trials in our study of prophecy, and particularly the book of Revelation, we, we, uh, we finished the, the judgments and, and the great tribulation, and went through that part of it. Now comes the victory. 
Now comes the glorious future that awaits us. And we look at, uh, we look at Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. In uh, 1 Peter 1, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That'll preach. Amen. <laughs> wow. So joy comes after the morning. Um, Comfort comes after tears. Uh, Jesus is coming after the tribulation. Amen. <laughs> Victory's coming after the judgments. And uh, so, beginning next Wednesday, we're going to go right to, well, we're going to go to chapter 19. And then we'll talk about what we're going to be doing in heaven. At the beginning of that chapter, there's a marriage supper. You ever been to a wedding reception? This is going to be one that, uh, uh, this is one for the ages, I can tell you that. And, uh, and then we mount our horses. And we're going to, <laughs> a couple of you are like, what? I, I, I don't want to ride a horse. We're going to mount our horses and we are coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Back to this earth. And uh, we'll talk about that next week. So the second coming next week. And, uh, but remember this. Judgment's, judgment's harsh, judgment's difficult, but judgment's necessary. And it's just like when you and I get out of line spiritually and the Lord has to chastise us, you know? Whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, right? Whom the Lord loveth, he disciplines. Sometimes he disciplines us. And um, that doesn't feel good. I've been disciplined many times by the Lord for getting out of line. Doesn't feel good. Spiritual spankings hurt. But you know what? After that is joy. When you get back in line, you get back in God's will, you, you learn from it, then there comes joy. And he wraps his arms around you. I remember when I would spank my kids growing up and I would always do it, never do it in anger. And uh, when I spanked my children, it was always where the good Lord made it to where, you know, it hurts, but you can't break a bone. Amen. Uh, I tell parents all the time, God is not for child abuse. But God made this, 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 this part of your body, you know, back here. Some call it the blessed assurance. But uh, this thing back here, did you know there's not a bone to break? But well, man, does it hurt. <laughs> and uh, and, and I, I would spank my children. And you know what? After I would spank them, uh, I would uh, kind of let them think about it for a little while. And then I'd always come back to them, hug them, comfort them, love on them, you know. And uh, so uh, sometimes the Lord spanks us, but there's going to be joy and, uh, but if, we, if we will respond well to, this, to his discipline. So judgment's necessary, and the judgment upon mankind will be necessary, but God has a reason, a purpose. He is true and righteous, but uh, he's coming again. Amen? All right. Let's go ahead and pray. It's about nine after. And uh, folks, let me just say again, uh, it's going to get very, very cold this weekend. Bitterly cold. So please make sure. This is when these masks come in handy, you know. Uh, when it's like really bitter cold out there. Put one on, cover your face. But uh, uh, so seriously, be careful. 
Make sure you bundle up, dress up, and, uh, you know, try not to be out too long. But, okay, no bus routes this Sunday, but we are not canceling services. Why? Because we have heat. Okay? Um, so far. <laughs> okay. No. But uh, we will have services Sunday, but no organized soul winning because of the bitter cold and no bus routes. But Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer. And uh, let's uh, close out. And then you can find your young ones if you need to find them. And uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our time of prayer we had earlier. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the, uh, Lord, the, the lesson for the Bible study tonight. And we covered a lot of ground. But, uh, Lord, we're, we're so thankful that uh, we are... Uh, Lord, just about ready to study the glorious coming of our Savior. And uh, Father, I, I, we know judgment is necessary. Help us to be a witness. This is our time now, Lord. It's our time to try to reach our loved ones and our friends and our co-workers and neighbors before it's too late. May we have that burden. Lord, bring us back Sunday. Please keep everyone safe uh, and warm. In Jesus' name, amen.